Hello, everybody. Welcome to the meetup. Dr. Tom here. We're going to get started in just a second, but first I want to make sure that the tech is working. So if you can see my slide, type in yes into the chat. My slide is purple and it says in white writing, what is the GAMSAT science section really about and how to best study for it. And on the left, it's got a white background and says digital meetup in black. If you can see that, type in yes into the chat so that I know it's working for you. I'd like everybody to type in yes if you can see that so that we know, so I know the tech is working. Okay, cool. Yes, is it coming through? Excellent, excellent. So now I want to say hello, because uh, I've often, I usually got people joining me from all over the country, sometimes even all over the world. So go to that chat box and type in the city that you're calling in from so that I can say hello. Type in the city that you're calling in from or dialing in from or you know, logging in from whatever. <laughs> Charlotte from Sydney. Welcome, Charlotte. We've got Nagu Nagain. Ap apologies, I'm mispronouncing your name, but you're from Adelaide. <laughs> Welcome. Never been to Adelaide. <laughs> Excuse me, never been to Adelaide. Cheryl uh, Zanti, one of the Greek islands. Wow, that sounds fantastic. It, much better. I mean, it's pretty good here on the Sunshine Coast, but uh, Greek islands sounds even better. Uh, Jacinta from Melbourne and many others. Welcome everyone. And I want to start by letting you in on a little secret. Because, and the little secret is that to become a doctor in Australia or the United Kingdom, the GAMSAT is not the major obstacle separating you from getting in. No. In fact, for most people, the major obstacle is the science section of the GAMSAT. But it's the, the science section is the most feared part of this exam. It's the longest, most difficult, most important section. For most people, it's the thing that prevents their medical school dreams from coming true. And the problem is that most people are studying for it all wrong. They think that learning more science topics will help or that doing more practice questions will help, only to figure out on the day of the exam what a horrible mistake that was. Who's had that realization already? Type in, that's me, if that's you, right? So even the science students, smart people with great GPAs, honors, even PhDs in the sciences are getting bad scores here. When they, when they were preparing, they thought they'd be okay because they're science students, and then they get smashed by this section. And if that's you, then type in, that's me as well. And the people with no science background, like the nurses and the physios and the or, the, or any other anyone who doesn't have a straight science background, they look at the topics and get overwhelmed by the amount of material. Right again, type in "that's me" if that's happened to you, because they often stand. The, the the truth is that people in this situation often stand a better chance of getting into medicine than the science students if they do it right. Plus, people are leaving it too late to start preparing for this. And a lot of them end up doing the games that over and over and never, ever increase their score. And if they do increase their score, it's literally by one or two marks, despite all the study. Even when working with a one-on-one -on -one tutor, people only increase by one mark. And if that wasn't bad enough, COVID has made it worse. It's now online. You can't write on the question paper because it's on a screen. There are less questions, so each one is more important. And the setting of the exam has thrown a lot of people off. However, we, despite all of that, every year people are getting high scores on this exam. That's because if you do it right, it can be prepared for so that the science section is actually your strongest part. Even if right now it's your weakest. And I'll show you how to do that in a sec. Now, if you start your preparation right now, ASAP, if you start the right way in a way that's relevant to this unusual exam, in the way that I'm going to share with you and give this exam everything you've got 100%, then you can increase your science section score by 20 points or more for this September, even if you work full time. I mean, in my boot camp, the average was 12.5 mark increase. And if you're doing it for the first time, you can get a high score now and not have to push, punish yourself, you know, doing this exam over and over again. Also, even if you work full time. And I'm going to show you how to do that tonight, step by step, 
so that you can apply it to yourself. And so that means that we've got a lot to cover in the 90 minutes that we have together today, right? We're going to go for 90 minutes and I'm going to cover the problem areas that people have with this section and how to fix them. I'm going to show you what they're actually testing you on in this section because it's not your knowledge of the sciences. They're not testing you on applied knowledge either or problem solving. And I'll show you how to answer even the most convoluted, difficult questions without knowing the science knowledge. And I'll give you the exact steps and I'll even apply it to some practice questions to prove to you how this works. And I'll show you how to pick out the vital information in the stimulus material that everyone misses, especially when it's on a screen. I'll give you a list of the science topics that are the assumed knowledge and what you need to do instead if you want to get a high score. And I'll give you the three steps you need to take right now to be ready for whatever they throw at you on the day. But before we get into all of that, I want to let you guys know kind of what to expect from me in terms of the way I like to do things, right? This is going to be more of a casual affair than what you might be used to. I'm running this from the home office. I got a pair of jeans and a t-shirt on, you know, uh, I, I swear occasionally. So if that bothers you, you might want to F off now. And I'm going to be real with you, all right? No fancy stuff today. I'm going to give you the straight truth. I'm going to give you some terrible looking drawings but they're going to teach you some important lessons and offer a few surprises as well. And uh, I want this also to be interactive, right? More like a conversation rather than what you, you might be used to where I do all the talking, you browse on three different devices, get bored and fall asleep. <laughs> right? So that's not the game we're going to play here. I want to make it interactive, not just because I think interaction is good, but because the more you tell me about what's going on for you, the more you answer my questions, the more I can tailor the presentation and give you exactly what you need. So is that cool with you? If it is, go to the chat box and type in good to go. Type in good to go so that I know you're with me. Now, just because of the sheer number of people on the meetup today, that chat box is going to be how we're going to communicate back and forth. You'll see, I'll see your messages. You'll see your own. You won't see everybody else's. That's just the setting for this for this Zoom but uh, head on over there and type in good to go so that I know you're with me. All right. So I'm going to be covering a lot tonight. Um, the idea here is for me to be as useful as I can be to you, right? To provide you with direction so that you know where you're going, some st uh, structure and support so that you can confidently move forward and get into medicine and finally feel the relief of getting an offer for medicine and becoming a doctor. And I can tell you that it's a great feeling. I know from every, uh, and I know that everyone here listening, whether you're watching this here live with me tonight or you're watching the recording, everyone's a bit different, right? So I've had to keep the information a little bit general so that I can help as many of you as I can. Then we're going to go specific with a few things as well. But at the end of today's session, I'm going to show you a system where you can take everything that, that we cover and apply it to your unique situation and get some extra help from me and my team if you want it. So that's my game plan. Is that cool with you? Yes or yes? Let me know by typing into the chat box. Now, take lots of notes. This is a note-taking kind of a session, right? Get a Google Doc, Word Doc, whatever you want to use, pen and paper if you're old school, and start taking notes. And um, remind me at the end, in the Q&A, at the end, you can ask me all the questions you've got. And I'll show, also remind me then, I'll show you how to get a diagnostic exam, a section three diagnostic exam that'll uncover the things you need to work on and actually show you what you need to work on. But also at the, at, remind me then, I'll show you how to get a recording of today's session in case you miss anything. All right, so I wanna dive in and start by giving you one of my favorite case studies. One of my, this is my very first student. And it's one of my favorites because if you listen carefully, there's a lot of lessons in it that will help you, that will help you with your science section preparation and help you get a great score. And so right now on the screen, uh, there's a question. Do you have a science background? I'd love to know. Let me know by uh, type selecting the, uh, the option that's correct for you. Do you have a science background? Yes or no? Hit the answer there. Three more seconds. Three, two, one. 
All right, you guys got to be quick around here. Share the results. All right, so 60% of you do have a science background. Yes, awesome. And 40% don't. Well, if you've got a science background, I'm going to show you how to adapt it to the GAMSAT. I'm going to show you why you've probably been struggling with the, the GAMSAT questions despite having that background. And if you don't have a science background, I'm going to show you how you can get uh, uh, get the skills and the different key aspects of this exam nailed quickly so that uh, you're also getting, uh, you know, you're also performing well. All right, second question, on same thing on the screen. How many times have you done the GAMSAT? Never, this will be my first, once, twice, three or more times. Let me know by selecting which one is correct for you. Three, two, one. All right, here are the results. 50% of you uh, have uh, never done it before. This is your first time. Twice, we've got 25% of you have done it twice. And 25% have done it three or more times. And I'm sure there's probably a couple who have done it once as well. Um, but uh, if you're doing it for the first time, I'm going to show you how to cut to the chase and do the stuff that works on your first go so that you get a great result first go. And if you've done it before, you're going to learn what may have gone wrong last time, what you missed and what you can do differently to get a higher score. So with that kind of insight, that, thanks for that, guys, by the way. It gives me an insight as to who's here and and kind of how to target the information. Um, so let's talk about this case study. So this person, let's do a bit of like a scoreboard. They, this person, he did some uh, high school physics, which is a good thing. You know, he had a little bit of background there. But no biology in high school or uni, no organic chemistry at uni or high school, or actually, no, I think he may have done some in high school, um, and no physical chemistry at uni. He hated writing essays at school, hated them with a passion. And at uni, wrote probably two essays. So not very good with the essays. Um, he learned the sciences from a textbook in the month before the exam, which you might think it's a good thing. It's not. We'll talk about that shortly. He attended a, a prep course prior to, to the exam, sat the gam sat, and ba boom didn't go very well that first time, right? So, but luckily he was passionate about becoming a doctor. He was determined to get in. This was something he was going to figure out and get done. So he sat the game, sat again. ba -bum, didn't go well. Now, the second time was really, really affected him because he was doing it once a year. So he was two years in studying his ass off each time and nothing to show for it. So it really affected him the second time. And he had to really dig deep and, and, and ask himself, does, does he actually want to do this? Is this something that's important to him? Because if it is, something needs to change. He can't keep doing what he's been doing because it's not working. So in something, he should have done that way before that, but, but he didn't know. So he took a different approach. He... He, he he changed the way that he was studying. And as you can see, we're running out of space. So it's probably going to, the story is probably going to end here. But he sat the GAMS at a third time, changed his approach and got in, right? Got in to a medical school, got the result that he wanted to and ended up very, very happy. But if you look at that screen, the scoreboard for this guy, you know, there's a lot of crosses there. It didn't look good for him. And you got to ask yourself what he did for that first attempt that didn't work and also what he did between that that first and second attempt that didn't work and then what he did differently for the third one that made all the difference because when you understand that it can, it can show you what you need to be doing now so that you can actually get that get in on your next go now, luckily for you this particular person documented everything he described what he learned about the GAMSAT. He put it up online for everyone to see for free. People liked it so much and he got such great results that he created a GAMSAT preparation company and has since helped over 60,000 people for the GAMSAT, creating a generation of new passionate and determined doctors. So who is this person? Well, that's me, right? That's my story. I'm that person. That's what I went through to get to where I am. I'm a doctor now, but those 
years of doing the games that were tough. I wasted a lot of time and effort and money. I spent too much time reading every textbook I get my hands on. I went to every course I could get to, and I got and I and I got my hands on every resource on GAMSAT, organic chemistry, and physics and biology. And I sat endless practice exams, and it took a long, long time and a lot of struggle. And you know what? None of it worked very well for me. It was all hit and miss stuff. It worked sometimes, it didn't work at other times, and it just didn't feel right. So I spent those initial few years and all the years since then getting to know and really studying hundreds of guys and girls who were successful at the GAMSAT science section, people who mastered organic chemistry, who were brilliant at physics, like that, you know, that TV show, The Big Bang Theory, you know, people like that. I've studied them, people who, who are incredible at physics or, and all the sciences, in fact, who are naturals at this section. But also those more, more, the more interesting ones are the ones who went from messing it up to getting a great score because they had to figure out what actually works. They didn't just walk in there and just naturally do well, which is pretty useless to me, personally speaking. What I want to know are the people who struggled with it and improved because they're the ones that can show you what to do. And I saw things and I learned things that I could not have imagined before. And as I learned these things, I created a system. I taught myself how to successfully prepare for this section, but particularly, uh, or the every section in fact, but particularly the science section. And I realized that this section of the GAMSAT is different. And I realized what it's really about. And uh, I put it all into that, that into into the, that that free book, and I gave it away to people for free. And it's 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 called the Gamsat Manifesto. Um, how to crush the Gamsat, get into the medical school of your choice, and become an effing great doctor. Now you can get that whole that, that book for free if you go to thanklivegamsat.com. That's the updated you know, version of the original book. These days, I have a whole team of people who work with me. And uh, and and we created a GAMSAT company called Thank Flip, and we've been running it for 16 years now. We used to be called Pass GAMSAT, but we do a lot more than just help you pass the GAMSAT, right? We help you with applications and interviews, and there's so much more that goes on here than just the GAMSAT. And so we graduated to Thank Flip GAMSAT. And um, Here's just some of the team. That's me on the on the right. That's my wife, Marie. She works with me in the company as well. She's our resident interview expert and mindset expert. We've got Diana, who's been with us for eight years, organizing the students and the tutors and the whole specialist team. We've got Dr. Carly and Dr. Kyle, a couple of my uh, my friends from medical school that I roped into doing this. Uh, we've got some of our tutors here, some of our specialist tutors who focus in on their sections who are I put in brackets doctors because they're not quite yet doctors, but in a, in a year or two, they will be. We got Zach here, who used to be one of our boot campers who came back to, to, to help because he loved what we do. And then we've got our PhDs. Not, we, help, we have people who have sat the exam, but also we have people who are professionals in their areas. We've got Ryan, who's got a PhD in creative writing and literature. His classes are some of the, the favorite of, of our boot campers. You, you'll be amazed at how quickly you'll understand Gamsat poetry after one of Ryan's classes. We've got Charlotte, who focuses on our essay feedback. We've got Olga, who also does essay feedback. We've got Gabriel, who's got a, uh, a PhD in physics and mathematics. And so it covers the science section. And so... The thing is, we're not here to just teach you physics and chemistry. No, we're here to show you how to crush the GAMSAT, get into the medical school of your choice and become a fucking great doctor or a surgeon or a dentist. And it sounds a bit funny, but we have the most exclusive GAMSAT preparation programs available. We have a cap on the number of people that we accept so that we can actually help you. And so you can't buy our stuff off a website. Right. That's on purpose. You have to speak to us first so that before we can accept you and we, because we want to make sure that you're the right kind of person for our course. You know, we have a sense of responsibility as to who we turn into a doctor. And uh, and so just you can see, like I said, these are just some of the team. That's not even all of them. That's some of the team. 
and I've I've hand picked them all. I've trained them. I've put them through hell and back to make sure that they know as much, or they know far more than me. In fact, in their specialty areas of the GAMSAT, as you've just seen, I do not have a PhD in creative writing, right? And even Marie, she, my wife, she's done over four. She used to work in hate human resource management, so she's done over four hundred professional interviews. And so, because of what I've learned. I, I, I'm going through all of this. I, I, I always get really excited showing people just like you how you can make the most of your study time, how you can get the highest mark you can and save yourself thousands of dollars and years and years of your time and get into medical school quicker and easier than, than 90% of people out there. Now, here, here are a couple of examples of the people we've helped. Right? This is Sunny. And this is what's possible for you as well. Right? Sunny was a physiotherapy student. Right, she did the she did uh, the GAMSAT a couple of times. First time she got fifty three in the science section. Right, fifty three. Then she studied her ass off, and her score went down. Right, and this is the crazy thing about the GAMSAT: you can study a lot, and your score can go down. And so her section three score went down to a fifty one, until she applied what I'm going to be sharing with you tonight, and then her score went up to a seventy. Right, that's a 19 point increase. If you've done the GAMSAT before, how would you like a 19 point increase? Type into the chat and let me know if you've like if you'd like an extra 19 points in your section three. All right, who would love that? Oh yeah, Charlotte. <laughs> Definitely, right? 100 percent So and then we've got Jane. Now she did the she also repeated the GAMSAT, but and applied what I'm sharing with you tonight. And her, she got an 82 in section three. Now, that is an incredible score. Um, and here's another one. Uh, this one I've I've blanked out the name because he's applying for medical schools at the moment. Um, but uh the first time he did it, he got a he got no, actually not the first time. He this is the, the most recent time. He got a 78 in section three. And I said, what was it last time? He said in the 50s. So what's that like? Some 20 odd point increase. Right. Here's what's possible when you apply the stuff we're talking about here. But I want to know about you. Right. I want to know what you need help with when it comes to section three. So my question to you right now, and I love it if you can type it into the chat. What aspect of the science section scares you the most? Let me know what scares you the most about the science section. Let me know by typing it in. What aspect scares you the most? All right, what have we got? What else? Come on, let's, let's type it in, guys. Um, we've got a couple coming through, but I want to see a few more. What about you, uh, Luna? What scares you the most? What about uh, Huang? What scares? I think that's Sammy. Who? What scares you the most? Uh, Jacinta. What about you? What about Naguya? And no, I'm, I'm I'm butchering your name. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so we've got physics, formulas, and units. Yes. Physics. Uh, we've got the amount of information in the stimulus material. Yes, the stimulus material. How much and the time it probably takes to get through that, right, Cheryl? Uh, we've got everything. Yeah. And so here's what I've heard before. I've asked this question before, and uh, here's what's come up. Now, physics is the first one. So, and in fact, you guys said physics was the first one for you too. Now, I want you to add if if you realize something that you are in fact worried about. Type that into the chat as well. So we've got physics, chemistry, organic chemistry. This is what people tell me scares them the most. The questions. So like uh, like, like Cheryl was saying, understanding the actual questions and the stimulus material. Timing, trying to get through it all. What to study and everything. Someone said that as well. And so that, that's a lot to be worried about, right? There's a lot there that people are struggling with and trying to figure out. And this means that there are three kinds of people that you're going to be competing against in the game set. 
And this leads me to Dr. Tom's crappy drawing number one. Like I said, there are going to be a couple of, I'm going to give you a couple of bad drawings that will offer a few surprises and lessons as well. So here comes the first one. I'm just going to hook up my, my uh, iPad screen. Let me know if you guys can see that. Uh, ba -ba -ba. So can you see that, uh, let's see, can you see that black cross on my iPad screen? Type in yes, if you can see that. Yes, yes, everyone type it in, let me know if it's working for you. Excellent, yes, it's coming through, fantastic. All right, cool. So if so, there are three kinds of people that are gonna be doing the game set. So if this is right now, right, and this is time along here, and this is the game set. Now, be it September or March, doesn't matter. Right now, you're going to get my terrible doctor handwriting, so you're going to need to listen carefully because you might not be able to uh, actually understand what I'm writing. So the first kind of person is going to do nothing with their preparation. They're going to complain about everything. Oh, it's taken too long. Oh, it's, I've got to do uni and work and uh, it, it, whatever they're going to come up with all kinds of excuses and they're going to do nothing to prepare and i think we can agree that's a bad place to be now let's have a look i'm going to delete like my daughter's been playing with this ipad oh there we are there we are okay cool the second type i'm just going to do something Right, they're gonna do what their mate recommended, what they read on some forum or in some Facebook group or saw on a free thing, and they're gonna just give it a crack and do something, and they're gonna find that it's a bumpy ride. And I think you can agree that there's there are a lot of forces in in our world at the moment that are putting you know that are putting downward pressure on our performance. Right, that's an arrow pointing down, believe it or not. Um, and so what these people might find is that their results are not where they expected them to be, right? And then now there's a third group. And these guys are, might be going a little bit like this at first, but very soon they're going to start to see an uptick. And by the time they get there, it's going to be going, looking pretty damn good. And these are the people who are doing it right. They are focusing in on what's relevant to this exam. They are studying in effective ways and they are making progress throughout. And there are people in my boot camp at the moment who are going like this, All right? So I think we can agree doing nothing is not an option. You wouldn't be here otherwise. And if you're not going to do anything, you know, I don't know what you're, what you're doing here. Um, and also doing something, I think we can agree that's not an option because you're not going to, you know, you're not going to get to where you want to be just giving it a go and doing a few free things here and there or, 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 or just, just, just whatever you heard online. What we want to be doing is being strategic, being purposeful, and doing the right stuff. So, right now, I'm going to give you a few practice, some, uh, some simple, practical, tactical things that you can do right now to get onto the right that right path. And I'm going to be running more of these support sessions, you know, in the lead up to March, and I'm going to be releasing a few more of them next week in the lead up to September, if you need that. Um, but what I want to do now is this you know, head into uh, I'm going to give you the three things you need to nail and have addressed in your preparation for section three to get that 70. How does that sound? How are you guys tracking? How's the pace? Are you keeping up? Is it, am I, is it too fast, too slow, spot on? Let me know. How's it going? Is this making sense? Excellent. All right. So Dr. Tom's crappy drawing number two. Let's get to a blank page here. All right. So a lot of people mess up their preparation for section three, right? But there are three key things that you need to have in place to perform well. All right. The first one is, and this might seem a bit obvious, but we're going to get into it in just a second. You need to do the work. Right? It doesn't happen in a vacuum. It doesn't happen by not studying for it or just doing a little bit. You need to do the work and do it right. We'll talk about what that means in a second. Secondly, is you need to nail the principles, 
the principles of high quality section three preparation. And then thirdly is you need to adapt to the GAMSAT online. So to the actual GAMSAT exam versus the other exams you've done in the past and to the online nature of it. Because look, if you're not doing the work, Right. If you're like, you know, doing other things, going going to your act, you know, full time work or whatever, or uni, and you're not studying for the game set, you're you know, you're you're, you're going to fall behind. Right. You're not going to be where you where you're expecting. It's going to be stressful as hell, and a lot of people are feeling that way for September right now. If you're not addressing the the principles of the of, of high quality section three preparation, oh, it's just going to be wrong. Your answers are going to be wrong. Your study is going to be wrong. The whole thing will just be wrong. And if you're not adapting to the actual online game set, it's going to be hard, right? It's all going to be a struggle and uh, it's not going to go well on the day. Now, on the other hand, if you are doing the work in the way that I'm going to show you in a second and make and uh, getting through it, you're going to find that you're actually ahead. And this is a great place to be because this is a competition with everybody else, right? You want to be ahead of everybody else. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Now, if you're working on the principles of, of Section 3 preparation, well, you're going to be doing it right. You're going, and your answers will be right. And that's where we want to be. And finally, here in terms of adapting, if you're adapting to what's required here, it's got, you're going to be in a, a state of flow and on the day, it'll flow and it'll just feel much more doable as a result. And that is a big part of GAMSAT, feeling like it's actually doable because a lot of people feel like it's not. Now, each of these, how do you actually do this? All right, that's good, Dr. Tom. Sounds cool. How do I actually do this? All right, well, there are three components to each of these. And this is for your notes if you're not making notes already. Right, so the first thing is, so we're talking about doing the work. Now, everyone is busy. There is no one who has a perfect run of the game set where all of a sudden the, the, the road has cleared. They've got no other things going on, no dramas, no issues, no work, no nothing. And it's just game set. It doesn't exist, right? So we need to, we need to make game set a priority. We need to be purposeful and careful with how we use our time so that you're actually giving it the energy because not not so that you're actually getting it done because if it, if it's the second or third priority, you're going to struggle. It's got to be number one or number two potentially. Secondly is your body. And what I mean by this is that study, for, especially for the games that is exhausting. You're sitting there for hours and hours and you're not just passively sitting there. You're engaging and you're thinking about it. And I, and I, Say to my boot camp is that you guys are like high performance athletes, but of the intellectual kind. And so you need to make sure that you are energized and, and have high performance and recharge habits. And the third thing part here is to get support because you're going to get stuck, right? You're going to have problems. You're going to need that support. A doctor doesn't look after their patients alone. They have a whole team supporting them and helping them along. So does an athlete. They have a team and you're going to need that as well. Now, moving over right over to principles. This has three components to it as well. So are you guys following? Is this making sense? Let me know by typing yes into the chat. Are you following so far? These are the three areas that you need to have nailed to get into that ideal. Let's, well, I mean, that's to get to that 70 plus range. And this is from 16 years of helping thousands of people prepare for this exam. All right. So here, when we're talking about the principles, the first thing and we, are the reasoning skills. Reasoning skills, right? We're going to get into this in, in, into more detail shortly, but the this is not a test of knowledge or applied knowledge. You know, uh, it's it's the test of your reasoning skills and people don't know what those are and they don't know how to prepare for them. And so that's one of the reasons why a lot of, a lot of people struggle. Secondly, are the practice questions. 
Some people, I'm not saying that you have to obsessively do endless practice questions. In fact, I'm on the anti side of that. Yes, practice questions play a role in your preparation, but not in the way that most people think. Because practice questions don't develop your skills, they test them, right? Imagine doing your uni exams over and over again with no study in between, hoping to improve, right? Sounds crazy, but people do that with the game set. Doesn't work. We'll talk about questions in, in a second. And thirdly, here is the timing. You know, you can do reasoning skills and questions as much as you want, but if you can't get it done in the limited time that you have, it's all for nothing. Timing is crucial here in the principles. And then moving right along here to the adapting. Now, this is all about being able to work through the, 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 the this unusual online format of the GAMSAT, right? So the first thing you need to do is to update your exam taking skills, right? So that you are not just working on paper, but you're progressively transitioning to the screen. Some people jump straight into the screen and it's a mess because you've got the scrap paper. They don't know what to do with it. Secondly is you need a plan. You need a plan for your preparation, but also a plan for the day. More specifically for your preparation, you need the structure and direction, not just at the start. Some people can get a plan at the start, but then they never look at it again. <laughs> But it's like building a car. You don't just build a car by going, oh, you know, I'll get a steering wheel over here and a chair and I'll try and attach the two. No, you start off with a blueprint. Same thing for your study. You need to have a blueprint as to where you're going, what you're going to do first, second, third. And then also as you go, how do you address the problems that arise? And thirdly, here we've got the actual exam day. What are you going to do? How are you going to manage it? How, what, what are you going to do first, second, third? What are you going to look at? How are you going to make sure that you're working through the paper effectively and in the way that gets you the most amount of marks because there are better ways to do that. Now, if we have a look at this picture, which I think is a great picture, if you get this bit done right, now don't judge me on my color coordination here. I'm not a designer. But if you get this bit nailed, if you get the work and the principles done, this is when you start making progress. Progress with your skills, progress with your marks. A lot of people study and get nowhere, but when you have these principles and the work now, that's when you're making progress. If you can get the principles and adapt to the exam, this is when you get unshakable confidence. Ah, uh, it's not working for me here. Right. Confidence that whatever they throw at you on the day, you can work through it. Whatever question, whether it's the, about the anatomy or the gills of a fish or whatever, you know with confidence that you can work through it and understand it and pull it apart. And then thirdly here, if you can adapt and get the work done, you get that nailed that is when you get unstoppable strength strength as in being able to overcome the obstacles along the way when dramas occur when sicknesses occur you can still work through it get it done and feel and, and know that you're going to be sitting there on the day of that exam performing well so progress confidence and strength who wants that from their science section study type in me if you would like to experience that as a result of your science section study, making progress throughout your, 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 your preparation, have confidence that you can handle what they give you and have that strength to be able to overcome any obstacles along the way. Awesome. Yep. Lots of yeses coming through. Fantastic. Now that is how you get into this 70 range, right? That is how we do it in the boot camp. It's what we call our GAMSAT Science Advantage. And at the, so right now, the world that we live in and the, the, the situations that a lot of people are faced with, there are a lot of pressures putting, there are a lot of forces putting downward pressure on you, right? They want you to shrink and get smaller and hide. But your job right now is not to get smaller and to hide. 
but rather to step forward, to step step up, to move to 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 do the work that's required by prioritizing games that making sure you you have the energy and the focus for it and having that support. Your job is to work on the principles so that you're addressing the reasoning skills, using the questions well, and you're getting your timing right and adapting to this exam in the format that it's in at the moment so that by updating your skills, by having that plan and by nailing the day of the exam. And that's how you get that, make progress, feel that confidence and have the strength to get it done. How does that sound to you guys? Right, that is how it's done. And uh, right now, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be, we're going to use our time to do a bit of a deep dive into some of these. We're going to talk about the reasoning skills because that is crucial for this exam. We'll talk about practice questions because everyone just, people are obsessed with practice questions and I'll show you how to use them well. And we'll talk about a plan so that you can actually get it done. How does that sound to you guys? Who wants to know more about that? Let me know by typing in yes into the chat. Sammy, Jacinta, Charlotte. What about you guys? Are you up? Are you up for that? How does that sound? Cheryl, ready to go dive into that? Would that be helpful? Let me know. Excellent. Yes, please. Okay, cool. All right, now let me close this iPad down now. Put that away. Go back to the slides. So what is in the science section? Whether you've done the GAMSAT before or this is your first time, it's it's important to establish and get really clear on this. So that's my question to you. I'd love it if you type into the chat. What's in the science section? What's what what's in there? Let me know. Type into the chat. What are you going to be tested on? What do you reckon? Cheryl? We've got a bunch of you being very quiet here today. What do you think is in the science section? What are the topics? Jacinta says extracting information from stimulus. Yeah. <clears throat> what else? All right, we're going to be talking about that in, in a second. But what I was, what I'm looking at here are the topics, right? Yeah, Cheryl, physics, biology, chemistry. In fact, here is a list of the assumed knowledge. Right, there's you might want to write this down. All right, in within the topic of physical chemistry, you've got basic atomic structure and period period periodicity. Um, so the periodic table, um, solutions and solubility, reaction rates and equilibrium, um, th thermochemistry, gas properties and phases. So much there. And then you've got organic chemistry, nomenclature, isomerism, addition reactions, substitution reactions. You got in the if it, then you got biology with enzymes and cellular metabolism and mitosis and meiosis. And then you got the gastrointestinal system, the respiratory system. Then you got physics with vectors and scalars and acceleration, momentum and Newton, Newtonian mechanics and gases and electric currents and magnetism. And then you got even more physics. And then you got GAMSAT maths with scientific not notations and, and estimations and trigonometry and so much more. And if you, I try to fit it all in onto a page, you, can, you, you can't read it. It's so small, right? And the problem with this is that even if you go away and try and memorize all these topics and apply them to the questions, you're probably going to fail. Because although that's the assumed knowledge, they're not testing you on it. Now, most people study completely wrong, though the wrong way for this exam. And where it falls apart for them is that they don't understand the difference between uni science and GAMSAT science. And that's why there are so many people who know the sciences, but still struggle with this section. So who's in that boat? I mean, at least it was more than 50, 60%, about 60% 60 of you had a, uh, a science background, right? So why do you think that is? Well, right, I can tell you right now that there is a trap. And I call this the, uh, the GAMSAT science trap. 
because there's a big th difference between uni science and GAMSAT science. And the way the trap goes is that people assume that they, they, they think that the assumed knowledge is what they're being tested on. And they approach this exam like a uni exam, like a uni or high school science exam, and they fall into the trap, right? Because to do well in a uni degree, whether it's a science or any degree, really, well, the way you do it is you look at the topics and the topics you need to learn, the curriculum. And then you go away and you watch the lecture, you attend the lectures and you make your notes from the lectures and you study those notes, you go to the textbooks, you make notes on that, you learn those topics. Then you do a bunch of practice questions in the back of the book to try and apply what you've learned. And then you get into the exam and you show them what you've learned and you do well, right? That's what I call the uni formula. And then people see section three of the GAMSAT and they, they're they like, well, that's kind of sciencey, right? I've done this before. And they assume that, the, and they, they assume it's the same as a uni exam. And so they take the assumed knowledge as their curriculum and they learn the topics from the textbooks. They go over their lecture notes and learn th these topics and they make more notes on different topics and they learn all that stuff and they apply it to a bunch of practice questions just like they would at uni. And then they get into the GAMSAT and they're shocked by what they see because the questions are so abstract. Half the things they studied aren't even in there. There are all these topics that you could never have prepared for. And the, the, the half dozen or so things that you have seen before are presented in such an unusual way that people are completely thrown. And they come to me and they say, Dr. Tom, it's ironic. I'm a science student, but that was my worst section. Is this sounding familiar to anyone? <laughs> and this happens because the GAMSAT is not testing you on the same things that uni is testing you on. Right? The GAMSAT is not testing you on your knowledge of the sciences. It's not testing you on applied knowledge. It's not testing you on problem solving either. That's what you do at uni. You know, if you do it on a science degree, they give you a problem, you go into your lab and you solve, you use your knowledge, you apply your knowledge to solve the problem, right? The GAMSAT's testing something else. So the big question becomes, what is the GAMSAT science section really testing you on? So right now, I, I want to know what you think. What do you reckon? Type into the chat, what do you think that they're actually testing you on in the science section? If you don't know, type in, I don't know. But I want to see an answer from everyone. What do you think <clears throat> that they're testing you on in the science section? What do you reckon? If you don't know, type in, I don't know. All right. Thank you for your honesty, Jacinta. She says, I don't know. Cheryl says, ability to extract information from stimulus. And... Yeah, kind of. But that can you see how vague that is? How do you actually do that, Cheryl? Uh, Charlotte says, ability to read large chunks of info and pick out important bits. Yes. And how do you, but how do you do that? How do you actually decide what's important, what's not? How do you work through it? How do you decide that, Charlotte? Um, Huang says, I don't know. Thank you for that. I think that's, is that you, Sammy? Awesome. All right. Awesome. All right, cool. So can you see how that's a problem? If you don't know what they're testing you on or you're being super vague, because then how do you actually do that? You can't. Well, what they're testing you on are, is actually in the title of the section because it's not called the science section. It's called reasoning in the biological and physical sciences. And the key word there is reasoning. Right. And so then the next question becomes, what the hell is that? What is this reasoning? And people, if I asked, if I'd ask you guys, I mean, actually, tell me, what do you think reasoning skills mean in the context of the GAMSAT? Let me know by typing that in. If you, and again, if you don't know, type in, I don't know. What do you reckon they're testing you on in the context of the GAMSAT? Charlotte says, I don't know. Thank you for your honesty there. Cool. All right. Sounds like, yeah, look, it's most people don't, either don't know or 
they they it's kind of a vague broad answer like kind of what you guys were saying a second ago and, and you know well done for giving it a crack it's great that you did but I, I set that question up specifically because to really I, I highlight this because it, can you see how that's a problem? Like if you don't know um, that it's a what what it had to actually do it, how can you actually get it done? You, you can't, and that's why so many people actually struggle here. And if you don't know what reasoning skills are and how to actually address them, you're not going to improve no matter how much study you're doing because you're going to be doing the wrong kind of study. There are people with university degrees in the sciences, even PhDs in the sciences, that they have the knowledge and they're coming to me in tears, literally in tears, saying, Dr. Tom, what's wrong with me? I thought I was smart. And I'm like, you are smart, but the problem is you're preparing for a running race by going swimming. You're not working on the right stuff. And you won't be able to answer half the questions because some unexpected topic will always come up no matter how much science knowledge you have and you won't be able to answer without the GAMSAT reasoning skills. There was literally a question about the gills of uh, the, about the anatomy of the gills of a fish. You're not going to cover that in the textbook. You're not going to cover that in first year uni chemistry and biology, right? So how do you do that? Well, with reasoning skills, right? And if you don't have them, you're going to be shocked by the unexpected. And write this down. There's only one thing you can expect to come up in the science section. And this is guaranteed to come up every single time. And the only thing you can expect to come up is the unexpected. <laughs> and it's funny when you say it like that, but it's 100% true, right? You don't know what it's going to be. And so it'll drive you crazy on the day when you're spending way too much time trying to figure out one question because you don't, you have the wrong tools for the job and you'll end up messing it up and, 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 and pretend, you know, getting a bad score and having to repeat it over and over. But on the other hand, if you know if you know what reasoning skills are, you know how to work on them, and you do work on them and you develop them, you're going to spend your time working on the things that are actually important here, the things that the, the, the GAMSAT is actually testing you on. You'll see through the tricks that they put in the exam, all the red herrings along the way to distract you. You'll be able to see through it like this x-ray and get right to the point so that you can answer the questions correctly, quickly, and get that score on the top couple percent that are going to get you into that uh, room with these other doctors and surgeons. Cool. So in a, and in a sec, I'm going to get, I'm going to show you some real life examples of how to do this. But first, I want to give you a, a, some case studies of people who have done this and how it's worked for them, so that you can see what's possible for you. Right. This is Kate. She uh, said that she got a 57 on the previous section three attempt. And this year she got a 70. Um, and she was pretty stoked with that. That's a 13 point increase after applying applying what we're talking about here. Uh, this is Sanura. He was working full time, right? So if you're a nurse or in healthcare or you're working full time, so was Sanura. He was a vet doing shift work. And he said, I, I messaged him. I said, hey, what did you get in section three in September again? He said 78, well done, man. And what was it before? I think 65, uh, awesome, you rock, thank you. So 13 point increase from talking, doing what we're talking about here. And if you're doing it for the first time, this is William, he did it one time, the first time, and he got, uh, what was it, in section three, uh, a, se a 73 on his first GAMSAT attempt. He's doing it again in September to increase his uh, his his overall score. But I mean, he's done pretty well for himself there. If that's all he gets, that's fantastic. And he only had, like you said, I only had four weeks of prep. So here's what's possible when you're studying in the right way and in a strategic and effective way. So let's apply this. Because I can, because the, the, when we talk about reasoning skills in the boot camp, the way we describe them, write this down, what reasoning skills are, it's an umbrella term for a way of thinking and, and, and strategies and techniques that help you to work through a range of strategies and techniques that help you to work through the questions. And so I'm going to get really detailed here and I'm going to show you how some of these work. We're going to apply it to a physics question because I know that everybody loves physics as we heard earlier, right? It's in fact, 
I do it because I want to show you on the most difficult topic that most people struggle with, how incredibly effective this is if you're doing what we're talking about here, if you do it, if you do it our way. Um, so I've pulled this out from my boot camp program, and so we're going to work through it together. I want you to play along at home and try and answer this as we go. All right. So we're going to read this and I want you to try and answer it. So unit 15, questions 49 to 50. Question 49 is. John has a thin converging lens and wants to make some projections using images on his phone screen. The lens has a focal distance of 40 centimeters. He holds the phone screen perpendicular to the principal axis of the lens with the center on the axis. He manages to make some real images on a screen on the wall. The refractive index of air is one. The refractive index of glass is 1.52. John knows two equations that can help him with his lens. And you've got the two equations on the left and the values on the right. Question 49 is, when the phone screen is 60 centimeters away from the lens, what will be the distance of the real image from the lens? So at this point, you might be going, holy crap, I need to, I need to look, look up lenses, right? I need to go to the textbook. I need to learn this topic. Well, I want to show you, you don't need to know what the topic is to answer this question. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to apply a few reasoning skills. So I want you to write these down. And then there's a whole array of these, and these ones work for some questions, not others. So you need to have them all to, to, be, to, do, it, to do it effectively. But for this one, first thing you want to do when you see a question like this is simplify the question for yourself. So what are they actually asking for here? What is the distance of the image from the lens? So if you imagine it, you've got the image, the phone on the left. To the right of that, you've got the lens. And to the right of the lens, you've got the image on the wall. And we're looking for the distance between the lens and the image. So we're looking for V here. V equals distance from image to lens. All right, and the next thing that you do when you're faced with a question like this is write it down. Write down what you know. So you're going to have a piece of scrap paper in the exam. So you write down what you know. Right, so we've been given we've been given the distance of the phone from the lens, which is sixty centimeters. Right, that was in the question. They told us right there. I've circled it for you. And in this case, the 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 phone is the object. Right, so that means that u equals sixty. We're looking for v. And we've also been given the focal distance in the stimulus material. Right, the, uh, if you remember here, the lens has a focal distance of forty centimeters. And so that corresponds to F, focal length of the lens. So right now we have FU. <laughs> um, and, uh, but do we have any of the other values? Right? We don't have, do we have capital M? No, capital H, no, small h, no. So we want to find V. And so which one of these equations on the left are we going to use? Top or bottom? Let me know. Type it into the chat. What do you reckon? Are we going to use the top one or the bottom one? Now, Sammy, it looks like you've done this question before. <laughs> yeah, we're going to use the top one. That's right. We're going to use the top one. And we're going to plug in the values, solve for V, and we get 120. Right? So do you see how we didn't have to have a detailed understanding of the topic to actually answer this? We used a couple of effective techniques that helped us answer a question on a topic you don't know anything about. And these, this is an example of some of the skills that you need to be working on to answer the unexpected questions that are going to come up. And that this is part of those principles. You know, when I gave you that triangle, I talked about the principles, the reasoning skills. This is what we're talking about. right? This is how you make sure that you're ready for the unexpected by learning these types of skills. But let's step it up a level because that one may have been a little bit easy for some of you. So this is the next question in that unit. It's question 50 comes immediately after the previous one. So let's let's do this one. The figure illustrates ray one along the normal no bending. Rays two and three are refracted and rays five and six are reflected. Ray four is intermediate between reflected and refract. Sorry, ray four is intermediate with, between reflection and refraction with an angle of refraction of 90 degrees. The incident angle for this case is called the critical angle theta. If the angle of incident is less than theta, the light will refract. If it is greater, the light will reflect. 
And then you've got an image that represents what we just read. That's a, that's a visual representation of that paragraph. The equation used to calculate the incident angle is, you've got the equation there with the, the values all to the right. What is the minimum angle at which light shone in glass will be totally internally reflected when bordered by air? So this is what I call a crap your pants kind of a question. <laughs> because you see it, you crap your pants and you move on. It's intimidating, right? There's a lot going on here. There's that paragraph with all these new words that you probably don't know. There's the image, there's the equation. So how do we work through all of this? All right? Some of you are giving it a crack. Let's work through it and let's see, right? So he, again, first thing we do is simplify the question for yourself. What are they actually asking you for? Well, it's asking for an angle at which one thing happens. Totally internally reflected when bordered by air. So in that case, looking at the diagram, which, one, which rays are we looking at? Type it into the chat. Totally internally reflected when bordered by air. Which ones are we looking at? What do you reckon? Cheryl, yes, five and six. Excellent. Who else? Uh, who else? There's a couple of you are trying to do the, give the answer, but I want you to play along at home. Let's see. Let's 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 apply these reasoning skills. And yes, five and six because Ray one, one, two, and three they're refracted. They go through. Refracted means they go through. Reflected means they're reflected, right? And four is intermediate. So it's but we want totally internally reflected. So we're looking at five and six. Okay, and so we want the angle that is enough so that all the light is bouncing straight back up. So the uh, the question asks for the minimum angle. So which one are we looking for? What would it look like on this diagram? Well, is it is it theta one or theta two? Which ones do you reckon? One or two? Which angle are we looking at? If we're looking for reflection, which angles are we looking at? One or two? One, right? Because one is here. Ref, uh, ro, the theta one is the angle between the ray shining and vertical. And a small theta, if you look at the diagram, a small theta means the ray will be pointing almost straight down. And so it'll go straight through the glass. It will be refracted through. And as theta one increases, the angle of the ray rises and starts to totally internally reflect, right? Somewhere here in between four and five, we get internal reflection, right? So that's what we're looking for, the minimum angle required for the ray to start totally internally reflected. And then beyond that, as we keep increasing it, the, the angle will, will, will be uh, internally reflected. So how do we figure that out? Well, if we go back to the stimulus material down here, it says, it tells us that if the angle of incident is less than theta, the light will refract. And if it's greater, the light will reflect. And that's exactly what we're looking for. It's telling us the angle of incident is the key angle, that above it, it'll do one thing and below it's going to do another thing. And so we're looking for the incident angle. And so we were given an, an equation that's used to calculate the incident angle. And so we've got three components to this equation. Theta is what we need to know. Then we have N2 and N1. And what are N2 and N1? Well, they're refractive indexes. And if you go back to question 49, and this is a tricky GAMSAT type of thing that, that we have to use the information from the previous question to answer our current question. So you have to go back to 49. At the bottom, it said the refractive index of air is 1 the refractive index of glass is 1.52. So that means we know that N1 is greater than N2. So N1 is going to be 1.52 and N2 is going to be 1. And so we plug that in, solve for theta and get C, 41.1. Now, before anyone asks, no, you don't get a calculator in the GAMSAT and you won't have to do such complicated calculations, but I just picked this one. You would have to do instead things like estimations, 
rounding things off and working through the calculations that way. Um, but I use this, this, this question as an example of a lot of things that happen in the game set, so how, how intimidating this question looked and how we didn't actually have to understand the topic to pull it apart. Right? We had to use specific skills to be able to, to understand what's going on and work through it. And it also pulled information from the first question in a very sneaky game, say kind of a way, into this one. Now, for our boot camp members who are here on the webinar, we go deeper into all of this in our acceleration classes, in the reasoning skills course, in the two-day science course, and we can, we can help you with that throughout there. Now, this, that, that, now this is um, Asher. Asher did the GAMSAT once and got offers from two medical schools, right? So she could have, she had to pick between two medical schools because she, she was applying this stuff. Now, I want her to tell her story herself as to what she did. So I'm going to hit play here. If you can't hear it, let me know. But otherwise, have a listen to how Asha, what Asha did to, to get that result. I remember getting my offer while I was cooking in the kitchen. I just looked at my phone and all I saw was Flinders. Oh, like, oh. I'm just, yeah, it, I just went crazy. I started crying. I was hyperventilating. And I was, my old man is a bit of a stoic tradesman and he's shedding a few tears my name's Asha and I got into Flinders University but I only, I only sat games at once in the end um, um yeah it was very confronting to start um but I'm very thankful I found you guys the major difference with what you provide is the reasoning skills uh or you could know all, like you said, all the organic chemistry, all your physics. Uh, you could have the theory down pat, but GAMSAT is notorious for asking those unexpected questions that no one will really know. So the reasoning skills was incredibly helpful. It boosted my confidence quite a lot just to feel that I had the ability to work through that if I got stuck. And the same with mindset. I found like Marie's mindset sessions were really helpful and no one else really provided that and that, again that's something I found very appealing about your program I can't wipe the smile off my face I found probably for four days I was waking up with a smile on my face and just it's like a sense of relief so there you go that's what's possible applying this this stuff I remember getting Oops. my let's move on now practice questions right Practice questions are where people go, oh, I'll learn the reasoning skills by doing lots of practice questions. But like I said earlier, practice questions don't develop your skills. They test them. So if you don't have the skills to begin with, you're not going to do well on the questions. You're just going to feel like crap because you're going to keep getting them wrong. And just like in this image, it's like people are, are pushing on the door when they should be pulling it. They're, 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 they're doing it the wrong way. Uh, you know, a lot of people come to me and they say, I'm just going to do lots of practice, practice questions and try and figure this thing out. And so I like to use an analogy to try and describe this because to develop the skills, and, and I want you to write this down because this is an analogy I tell my boot campers all the time. They all know the Olympic sprinter analogy, and I want you to know it too. Because to develop the skills to do well in the in the science section is kind of like when someone wants to become an Olympic sprinter. Right. Let's say they're just an average Joe and they want to become a sprinter. The first thing they would do is they they don't know how to run fast or what to, how to get good at it. So so they would get the book by the world running expert, and they would read about things they need to get good at to run really fast. Right, makes sense. But just by virtue of reading that book, they're not going to be a fast runner. Right, they've just read a very informative book about how to run fast. So what they need to do next, number two, is go to training. They need to hit that track and do the work, develop the, the work on the techniques, do the drills and the exercises and the the, the and just do it over and over and work on the, the practical parts of getting fast at running. And then once they've done that for a little while, they need to assess their progress. They need to identify their weaknesses and see what they need to work on next. And so they go to a local competition. They go to that competition and they run that race and their coach says, 
right? You came in third, you're doing okay, but you suck at raising your knees. And at that point, what do they do? Do they go straight to the next competition or do they go back to training? What do you reckon? Type that in. Do you reckon they go to the, straight to the next competition or do they go back to training? Well, they go back to training because they need to work on that skill of raising their knees more, right? And so they work on that skill of, they do the drills and the different exercises to, to, to improve the raising of the knees and all sorts of other skills and, and exercises too, to generally keep improving. And once they've had some time to, to improve, they go to the next competition to again, assess their skills and, and identify their weaknesses. And then they go back to training and hone in on those weaknesses. And they keep repeating that process until they get to the Olympics. Makes sense, right? So then the big question becomes, how does that apply to your science section preparation? Have a think about that, right? What is step one, two, and three? Because the way this works is the first step when they read the book, that's like discovering what, what are the reasoning skills? that this is about reasoning skills. What are the techniques and the strategies, the, the, the knowledge to do well in this exam? That's like learning what this test is about. But just by learning that, like for example, you just coming to this session doesn't necessarily make you great at section three. You've learned some very informative things and helpful things, but you now need to work on those skills. And that's what number two is. That's doing the drills and the exercises over and over to actually develop the skills that are being tested here. And number three, that local competition, where the, where the sprinter goes to the competition to test themselves, that's like the practice questions. That's, you don't develop your skills there, you test them. So when people come to me and they say, oh, Dr. Tom, I'm just going to do lots and lots of practice questions. That's like when someone, let's like imagine the sprinter goes, I want to go to the Olympics. They read a book. They skip all the training and they just do one race after another, trying to improve. They go, thanks coach for the feedback. They go straight to the next competition, running their heart out. And they're slow and they're falling over themselves and it's a nightmare and they're, and they're like these people on the screen falling over, not getting anywhere because they're not actually developing the skills that are being tested here, right? So the key thing here is that you need to spend 80%, write this down, 80% of your section three time should be spent on developing the skills. And only 20% is doing practice questions to get you, give you feedback, to identify your weaknesses. Because some people freak out, oh my God, I got it wrong. I'm like, great, you got it wrong. You know what your next level of improvement is, right? That's your 20%. And this is what Sunny did. She's, I mentioned her earlier, she went from a 53 down to a 51 and then after doing what we're talking about here she got a 70 so i'm going to hit play and she'll, she'll tell her story of how she did it let me know if you can't hear it again sat attempt and my biggest weakness was always section three like i got a 53 the first time and then a 51 the second time but then i had heaps of power calls with the sign especially and i focused on my technique rather than my study and I bumped that up to a 70. So the science was my weakness, but it like turned out to be a strength. So yeah, my full name is Sanana Raghuraman and I'm going to Macquarie University. I'm pretty excited, yeah. The whole application process and the GAMS that there's a lot of ambiguity to it. So it's really easy to feel lost. But with you guys sort of guiding me and giving me advice on things I can improve, I did feel a lot more reassured. At first, like, I was conscious of the fact that it was pretty expensive, but you get so much out of it. There were a lot of times where I was super stuck on a science question and the science specialist would explain it in a way that made so much sense. And he also gave me heaps of strategies to help with other questions as well, and that was really useful. And that really meant a lot, and I got so much support aside from just the resources and that was what I needed when I joined the boot camp which is probably when I was at my lowest point so yeah excellent let's and uh here's Bianca a lot of you might might resonate with her she was a very busy person she uh she was working she was finishing off her PhD I think and working part-time doing uh preparing a wedding uh, renovating a house, doing a lot while preparing for the GAMSAT. 
And then she she applied what we're talking about here and said, I got an offer for not to Notre Dame, Sydney today. My dream of 20 years, almost to the day, has finally come true. It was the day I left the hospital after my operation to remove a cancer. I can't stop crying. If you didn't get in, hang in there. This was my fourth attempt. Now, Bianca came from a very abusive child uh, household. She, 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 it was a really rough childhood for her. And at the age, I think it was like seven or eight, she developed cancer. And so she went into hospital and got the treatment from the doctors. And the, the, the doctors were so caring, so thoughtful, so compassionate towards her. And it was things that she never received at home. Right, she was had a really rough, rough, rough um, household, and so she and and they and they saved her. They 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 cured her cancer, and so she was inspired by the love and the compassion she received from the doctors that she decided that she's going to become a doctor at, at at that point. And she was the first person to go to uni in her family. Everybody doubted her, but there she is, you know, applying this stuff with the help of our, our boot camp and, and you know, achieving her dream. And it's a really inspirational story. That's what's possible here. This is Gemma Cameron. She got, uh, she was doing the GAMSAT for the first time. She was a uni student. She did a science degree, got into Melbourne on her very first GAMSAT sitting. She said, common sponsored offer for University of Melbourne. This is Ashley Beeman. She was a, a nurse, did the GAMSAT once, got an offer for Deacon. She was very excited. And, uh, and, uh, and she, but she had a lot of self doubt. She's really interesting. She had a really interesting story because she doubted herself so much, and we had to help her with a mindset. A lot of the big part of what we do in the boot camp is around your mindset and your confidence. And so we helped her with that, and she ended up you know, getting in. This is Grace. Grace was another interesting story. She was uh, training pilots in the Air Force. So she's like the Top Gun pilot, like Tom Cruise from the movie, right? She's training them, and she promised me that. If I got her into medicine, she'd get me onto one of those jets and teach me, a give me a lesson in there. And I, she got in. I'm still waiting for that bloody lesson, Grace. I'm still waiting. <laughs> this is Laura. She said, um, I would like, I also like to add that I received an offer for Notre Dame, Sydney. This is proving to be the best holiday ever. Thank you all for your help getting me in. This is Susanna Gooley. She got in too. Hayden. Aiden's a great story. He did the GAMSAT five times. Now, I don't recommend doing it five times. I recommend cutting to the chase and doing what he did on his fifth attempt. But Hayden went from scoring in the 50s for, for Section 3, right? He started in the 50s and he worked his way up to a 78, right? A 78 and got into Griffith. And he loved what we do in the boot camp so much that he actually came back and he, he's been one of our Section 3 specialist tutors for a while now. Uh, this is Jack. Jack to the GAMSAT, uh, he, he's got a funny story because when he met us, we were speaking at a university in Melbourne and we were playing some, some music at the start. We are playing Lizzo and my wife Marie was dancing and he says here that I met you guys in Melbourne with Marie dancing to Lizzo's Good As Hell song last year. That song is now playing in my room because we, <laughs> he was celebrating getting into Deacon with that. Uh, Kushani, she got an offer from Melbourne. She doubted herself as well. When she got that offer, what she said was, I can't believe I'm good enough for them to even look at me. But she was, and she got in to, she got an interview and got into Melbourne. This is Vanina and Brendan. They both got into the same place, and it was very nice to have boot campers that she knew there. This is Dong Zhu. Have a look at his scores, right? That's what's possible when you're studying in the way we're, I'm talking about here. And this is Ben. And I think Ben really nailed it. That's what this is really about. It's about you. It's not about just about the games. It's about you becoming a doctor, right? And getting and, and becoming that doctor and, and, and for the rest of your life, right? And at this point, you can probably see that there is a lot more to the science section that you than you realize. And there is so much going on here. And the truth is that there is a lot to get through in this short period of time from now until September or even March next year, especially to do it on your own. So I'm glad that you're here and you're learning this. So how do you apply this to yourself and your situation? Well, now I've shown you as much as I can about, but there is no way that I can cover everything that my team and I have learned over the last 
16 years in a short, you know, 90 minute talk like this. There is a gap between where you are and where you want to be. Plus, there's everything you need to do for the essay section for section one, right? So at this point, you're probably asking yourself, how can I address all of this in my preparation? And what's the best and most effective way I can do it for this exam? And how can we help you do that? And so what I'll, if you've been wondering that, here's what I'm going to do now. In a minute, I'm going to go into Q&A time where you can ask me any question that you have about your preparation. I'll stay on the line to answer your questions and remind me then and I'll give you a recording. But first, I'm going to answer some of the questions I've been getting about my GAMSAT boot camp and how, uh, how you can get our help with all of this. Because the boot camp is designed to help a GAMSAT candidate go from where you are. So maybe you've done the GAMSAT before and you didn't get the Section 3 score you wanted. Or maybe you're doing it for the first time and you desperately want to make this your make make this happen and make this your 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 last your first and last sitting. Or maybe you're sick of repeating it and you want to get it done this time and get it done forever. So we take you from that place and put you in a place where you're actually getting the right score, you're working on the right things, developing the right skills, you're getting the support, that whole triangle that we talked about before, the principles, the work, the adapting, you're getting that, you're making progress, you're feeling that unshakable confidence, that un unstoppable strength, right? And we help you with section three, but also sections one and two, if that's relevant to you so that you get into a medical school and become a doctor as soon as possible. The boot camp has everything that we've talked about today, such as reasoning skills. And in fact, it covers every aspect of the GAMSAT based on what I've learned and my team has learned helping thousands of people over the last 16 years. So the boot camp is if you're willing to do what I say so that you actually implement the steps immediately and get the best results, um, because we want you to move fast with this thing the exam is coming up fast and we need to be moving quickly and acting quickly as well so if you want to find out more about it it's really simple you'll have a quick conversation you and one of my team members on the phone for 15 minutes and all i'd ask you to do right now is open a new web page go to bit.ly forward slash thank flip and enter your details to have a chat with the team and then we'll book you in for a 15-minute call with the team on the phone. Now, if you're not totally committed to becoming a doctor as soon as possible and you just want to have a chat, then the boot camp is 100% completely not for you, right? No pressure at all, no offense meant, and hopefully none taken. But in that 15-minute conversation, my team member is just going to have a look at you and your preparation and where you're at. They're going to ask you a ton of questions in that first 15 minutes just to help them to know if we can help you or not. Are we a good match or not? Is it worth us talking more or not? And if not, then hey, no hard feelings. They'll let you know politely and you'll just end it there. And if they think that we can help you, you tell them a bunch more about your preparation and what you're hoping to achieve with the GAMSAT. And we'll talk about the boot camp and go from there. So right now, open up a new web page, go to bit.ly forward slash thank flip and enter your details to have a chat with the team. Now, just to give you a heads up, doing these calls takes my team away from helping our current boot campers who are busy preparing for the September campsite. So we can't, we don't have many of these available. So they're going to get snapped up pretty quickly. So head on over there right now and get put your details in to have one of these calls before they disappear. All right, so while you guys are doing that, here's another example of what's possible when you study in the boot camp with what we're talking about here. This is Lucy. She did the GAMSAT the first time and got a 78 in section three. She was disappointed with that and did it again and got an 86, um, which, is, which is pretty all amazing. Uh, again, Gemma Cameron, you heard from her, but just to continue the story, she got into Melbourne, right? She got into Melbourne, but then she had some personal issues, et cetera, had to leave 
med, med, uh, medicine in Melbourne, which is a, a big deal. You don't just leave a medical school. And so she was kind of freaking out if she'd be stuck without a degree. But then she applied for the University of Queensland and and got in there again on her first attempt. So she says, hi, everyone. I haven't been as active here this year, but I thought I'd let you know that after moving to Melbourne and beginning the MD at University of Melbourne this year, I ended up having to move back to Queensland for personal reasons. Thankfully, I've just received an offer from UQ to start over there next year. And this is Lauren Crocker. She says, hi, Marie. Just thought I'd let you know that I got an offer from UQ today. So totally unexpected. Well, personally, I don't think it was unexpected. She Im implemented what we share in the boot camp, what we taught her. She got, she got the result as expected. So let me know if you have any questions. Uh, Sammy's saying how to become a member and how much. So Sammy, go to that link and put in your details to have a chat with the team. And they'll have a chat with you to see what you need help with, how it works. And then you'll talk about the price. If there's a range, depending on what you need help with and how long, you know, what period of time you want to pay over. That all varies depending on your situation. So have a chat with the team and they can help you out there. Awesome. Any other questions? Let me know. But um, looks like we've come to the end now. If you've enjoyed the session today, if you've learned something, if you've gotten something out of it, I'd love it if you could share this with your friends. Um, we don't do much advertising except for some Facebook ads. So we put all our energy and resources into supporting, helping you guys, giving you lots of free goodies. And then, you know, I appreciate it if you could share our stuff or you know, next time you get the opportunity, say something positive about us online. That goes a long way. So, um, any other questions? If not, I'm going to go and finish my dinner. All right. Thanks, everyone. Looks like that's it. Um, well done to those who put their details down. The team are going to call you at the time you've scheduled. Um, be ready for that call. And uh, you're going to get a lot out of it, whether it's in the whether you join the boot camp or not. It doesn't matter. They're going to help you as much as you can. And we'll go from there. So good night, everyone. And I'll see you next time.